Oh, hi. In this module, we'd like to discuss proteins. Proteins are long chains of amino acids. Amino acids. And every amino acid has precisely the same structure, but it's unique because of one little side group. An amino acid, amino, is another name for an amine, which is the functional group with a nitrogen, bonded to what I like to call carbon and hydrogen stuff, meaning we're not going to put an oxygen here. We're not going to have a carbon-oxygen double bond next to here for an amide. Pretty simple carbon-hydrogen stuff. An acid is the carboxylic acid group. COOH is our carboxylic acid group. The R is indicating that we have first atom out here, carbon, an alkyl group, some type of carbon structure. An amino acid also has a carbon stuck in between here, so the structure goes like this. Our amine group, and I'm purposely putting a pair of electrons on the nitrogen, a carbon bonded to a hydrogen, and I'm showing it up top, and then here's where the uniqueness comes in. This carbon will be bonded to something identifying that amino acid, and then our carboxylic acid. This is the basic structure of all the amino acids. They all have this structure, have something different, making it unique in that side group. Before we talk about that side group, though, let's take a look. We have a base, a pair of electrons, and we have ourselves carboxylic acid. We have an acid. So this could actually protonate itself. The H plus could leave the carboxylic acid group on the right, come over here onto the left, giving us NH3 plus and COO minus on the right side. Either form is acceptable. We're all looking at the same thing. The side group, in this case, I've made the simplest possible. Smallest atom, hydrogen, single bond. This becomes a particular amino acid by the name of glycine. Glycine for years and years had a three-letter abbreviation. G-L-Y, capital G-L-Y, and lately, because of all the work that's being done, we abbreviated it further, we'll give it a single letter G. Well, amino acids hook together to one another, so I'm going to leave this one up on the board, and I'm going to bring another amino acid right next to it. So I've got one amino acid sitting next to it, second amino acid. We're going to do condensation reaction, meaning the loss of a small molecule. I'm putting a box around water. H2O is inside that rectangle, and H2O is lost. The water molecule squeezed out and it'll be lost. We're going to make a new carbon-nitrogen bond. Let me go ahead and put a reaction arrow and draw our product. I certainly don't mind drawing some structure here. I'm going to underline that particular hydrogen, telling us that that's unique to glycine. And now, let me label this new bond. We did not used to have a carbon-nitrogen bond. Now we do, and water's been removed from the middle. And here we go. I've left that side group blank the whole time. I'm going to choose phenylalanine, one of the 20 amino acids which are utilized by human beings, phenylalanine. And I have made a new functional group. The carboxylic acid is no longer there. We do have an amine, but that nitrogen is part of a bigger functional group that we call an amide. Proteins. This is not a protein up on the board. This is two amino acids. Proteins are much, much bigger molecules. Think of it as thousands, tens, hundreds of thousands of amino acids clicked together all in a row to make a long strand. So you and I are sacks of polyamides with lots of water.